Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new PSP graphics tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be covering how cameras work. Basically, we will be creating an application that uses a camera to move around the scene. The source code and uh, the SEGU version can be found in the description. For our base code here, it's pretty much the same as last time, except we've cleaned up some of the texture initialization inside of this common GL uh, header here. Uh, but basically, if you continue from the previous, everything should be basically the same. If we go ahead and run it, you can see that it's the same as the last tutorial. So, so to understand how our camera works, we have to understand the transformation matrices and the way that the transformation matrices work in 3D graphics. There are three fundamental matrices required for any Z-buffer rendered application, so any rasterized application. These three are the projection, view, and model matrices. The projection matrix manages the actual translation from a 2D space to a 3D space, or rather, from a 3D space to the 2D space. Uh, this can be uh, perspective or orthographic, or there are other uh, more obscure formats that translate 3D points onto a 2D screen. We won't really be talking about this in this uh, tutorial. We'll be talking about the model and view matrices. The model and view matrices uh, basically store affine transformations to arrive at a certain end result. An affine transformation is just uh, any valid transformation using matrices. The view matrix is typically used to represent the camera, while as the model matrix uh, represents the model in the world. So, for example, the camera, uh, the view matrix will always reflect what the camera is, whereas the model matrix may reflect whatever object is currently being drawn. There are three main types of affine transformations that can be applied, which is translate, rotate, and scale. These need to be used in combination. Each transformation can be represented by a matrix, which is then multiplied against the existing model or view matrix. This makes order pretty relevant. For example, if you scale and then transform a point, or translate a point, for example, a point at 1, 1 scaled by 2 and translated right by 3, you first do 1, 1 times 2, so you get 2, 2, and then translate right by 3, so 2 plus 3, so then you'll get 5, 2 as your result. However, if you do this in the reverse order, so in this case, we would have a point 1, 1, translate it to the right by 3, and then multiply that by 2. Uh, 1 plus 3 uh, will become 4, so we'll have 4, 1 as our point. 4, 1 times 2 becomes 8, 2. And as you can tell, that's a very different result. So when you apply these transformation, it matters which side the matrix is on, and which order you need to put them in. For example, on the PSP, if we perform a translate followed by a scale, it actually has the result of scale and translate because the matrices are in the opposite order. We'll keep this in mind when we're setting up our camera. So to first define a camera, let's go ahead and create a struct here. And this has a floating point, X and Y, which is the position. We're doing it in 2D. And then we'll have a rotation. And this is enough to define a camera 2D. If we wanted to extend this to 3D, we would add just the Z and the and differentiate between yaw and pitch. Defining the camera is relatively simple. The camera has a position and a rotation. If we wanted to define the 3D uh, camera, we would define it like this. We have a floating point X, Y, and Z, so this is our location. And then we would, we would have yaw and pitch. So it's important to keep in mind that when we have multiple dimensional cameras, that uh, the number the number of rotations is typically equal to the number of dimensions minus one. So for example, 2D, we have only one rotation, whereas 3D, we have two. Now technically you can get into tilt in 3D, uh, but camera tilt is usually not a feature that people like. This would be sort of the uh, lateral twisting around the center point of the camera, which while is, that's what you want in 2D, that's not what you want in 3D usually. So now that we've defined a camera, let's actually apply this to our uh, game. So if we go ahead and do void apply camera using a const camera pointer, camera 2D pointer, uh, and we'll call it cam. We will first off do the matrix mode has to be the view. So we're going to be setting up the actual camera to use the view matrix, which we talked about earlier. We'll load the identity, and if you don't recall what this does, it pretty much just resets it to the default. And then at the end of our function, we'll go back into the model, model and we will also reset the 
identity matrix here. Now in here is where we actually set up where the view should be. So for this, we'll need to do a translation to get to our position, and then we'll have to do a rotation. And in this case, it's rotating Z because we want to rotate around uh, basically the center point of our camera. Now, it's important to remember that the way that you actually want to apply uh, transformations is going to be scale, then you're going to do rotation, and then you're going to do translation. Now, because of the order of how these things are multiplied uh, using the matrix code, we actually have to specify it in the reverse order, though. We specify the translation, followed by the rotation, followed by the scale. In this case, we're not actually going to run a scale because it's a camera and it's not necessarily what you want. You could create a scale variable and actually do something like zooming. So if you wanted to, you would just uh, apply GLU scale here and you would scale it by a scaling matrix, which would be equal to whatever constant that you set. This can be useful, but for most cases, you're not going to use this. So for GLU translate here, we're going to need a vector. So to do so, we'll do an SEPSPF vector three, which is our vector. And we'll set it equal to the camera X and the camera Y, and then followed by a zero. And then we'll give a reference there. And to rotate by the Z, we'll just do camera rotate. And that's all you actually really need for the applying the camera code. Uh, all we need to do now is just go ahead and do camera 2D, camera equals, and then we can use this uh, syntax here to say the X is zero, the Y is zero, and the rotation is equal to 45 degrees. Now, this actually brings back to the point here. Rotations uh, is going to be in radians, so we actually need to modify this if we want to use degrees. So we have to divide by 180 degrees times pi, so 3.14159. And that will actually translate our code correctly. So now we have a camera. It will rotate everything 45 degrees. And then where we want to apply it is right here before uh, we do any transformations, but after we've cleared the screen. So we'll do apply camera and we'll specify the camera that we created. So if we make that, and then run the eboot. As you can see, we have the 45 degree rotation right there. Similarly, if we went ahead and changed X to, or X to be 0 0.25, and let's say Y is 0 0.5, you can see that our, uh, our things moved. Now to make this camera dynamic, what we can do, let's set 0, 0 here. Something we can do is very easy, camera dot rotation plus equals one. So basically after every frame, this will just increase the rotation by one degree. So if we run this, you can now see we have an actively rotating uh, sc screen here with uh, the different squares. Now this would apply to every single thing in the screen. So if I had like a thousand sprites on the screen, all 1000 would be rotating. And this doesn't actually have any real cost beyond just setting the matrix here. This is already going to happen per frame. So actually adding rotations and translations does not realistically end up uh, resulting in your screen drawing any slower. And to prove that we can move uh, things here, we can do camera.y is equal to sine of the camera rotation divided by 180. And we're going to make this about 0.5f because it's uh, we wanted to keep it in the range of the screen. Also, make sure to include math.h here so that you actually have the sign function. Otherwise, you'll get a warning. And if we go here, we can see that everything is rotating still while the actual point itself is moving up and down. So the center of our screen our, the quote unquote center of our screen is like the middle point here and you can see how it's moving based on the relative rotations of these two. Either way, congratulations, you now have a camera that you can control to scroll around your screen. As an exercise, try combining the camera with button inputs.
Anyways, congratulations and have a great day.